Sacks. And they're going to go for two. They originally were going to go for one and kept the offense out to go for two here. It, it's always the same thing. It's the math that is slightly in your favor to go for two. If you get it, you can win the game in regulation. If you miss it, you get a second point chance at two on the back end. I know it drives people crazy. It actually is favorable from a mathematics standpoint. No backs to make it a five-point game. Mayfield for Evans. Melifonwu covering. Wow. No flag, no points, eight-point game. Well, Evans had to stop and jump back through Melifonwu. you got to make that call really easy on the official. Stop and jump right back through him. He just kept backpedaling. A good no call, you think? I, I'm, I'm okay with it. Eight-point game. Eight-point game here inside Ford Field. Didn't tighten it up to a six-point game because the two-point conversion tonight. Bring in Terry McCauley, our rules analyst. Terry, what do you see here? Mike, I think Chris nailed it. There's slight contact. I don't see anything that significantly hinders the receiver at all on this play. Good no call. All right, thank you, Terry. Chris pointed that out. Evans coming back, could have drawn a little more of that. Let's see what the kick is. It is a normal kick. The Lions had their hands team out. The ball goes into the end zone. It's a touchback, and Detroit will get it at the 25. All right, Mike, I just want to go back to the two-point play. So. This season, 55% on two-point conversions is the conversion rate. And the idea that you're just automatically going to make two kicks in a row, well, that percentage is only 95%. So you're going to deduct. It's not a 50-50 proposition that you kick the extra point. So when you add those two things together, it is very favorable to go for two in that situation. Which is why people do it. Now, the Lions were in this spot. They got the ball up one with 4.07. The Rams had one timeout left. The Rams never saw the ball again. And the Lions repeat that. They start with St. Brown. And Amon Ra's on the run for 15 against a depleted Tampa defense. Kaylee. Yeah, Mike, that Bucks secondary is without cornerback Jamel Dean. For the second time tonight, we saw a Bucks player carted off the field and taken to the X-ray room. Dean's lower back was evaluated in the medical tent. When he was helped off the field and sat down on the sideline bench, he couldn't even sit up straight. You could see how much pain he was in, and on that car still can't sit up straight. See that, Kaylee. Thank you. It's been such an injury filled year. So Zion McCollum has played a lot in the absence of the two quarters this year. Remains in, and the Lions are running through the Bucks now. It's Montgomery for a first down. Across midfield to Tampa territory, and that clock is moving very fast if you're a Buccaneer fan. And Zion McCollum came in, and he has more snaps than any corner on the Bucks this year. But the problem is, it became a target, right? They really try to avoid Carlton Davis because he's so good. They went after Dean. Dean, I thought, played a really good game out there tonight. But the minute he left, that drive was just one throw after another at the replacement. And despite the fact that he is a good player, he's not Javel D. We saw the last three drives. Chris, three straight touchdowns. Lions had one touchdown in their first six full drives. They had one kneel down. Goff in trouble here. Has to protect it. Goes down as he's taken down by Shaq Barrett. So the veteran gets him. And Tampa will use their second time out here at 3.02 to go. Yeah, what we've seen. The in oh. Defense number 24. Oh, Five my penalty. goodness. Automatic first down. Right. Flag was over there on the far side. And that adds to the things that should have happened for the Bucks, but didn't today. Oh, my goodness. Watch this. Carlton Davis, you know they're not going to throw at him in this situation. And he almost took off the helmet of Josh Reynolds. Great call by the officials. Timeout. As the clock stops due to the penalty, first down. Situationally, though, if you're Carlton Davis, you know they're not throwing that way. They're not throwing that way. There's no chance. They didn't do it on the previous drive. So you, you can't turn off being a football player, but I think you also have to understand, I don't have to be that aggressive here. 
Now down to 302. Bucks got the timeout back. They've got two. Here comes Montgomery. Vita Vea holding on. Devin White finishes the tackle. Eight of four, 252 to go. As Tampa will take the second of their three timeouts. I tell you, Vita Vea is such a nightmare in there to try and run against them. And Frank Ragnow <laughs> deserves a medal for making its way through this game against that guy, one of the best nose tackles in the game. Ragnow has been beat to a pulp, and yet, as he's done throughout the course of his career and those six years of suffering through, really, on really bad teams, is jumping up and just having a big day. Melissa? Yeah, you're talking about center Frank Ragnow and just being tough, all banged up. At one point, he came to the bench, had a quick chat with the team doctor said I'm fine and just grabbed the tablet and then head coach Dan Campbell made a point to come over to him and check in and say are you good man and he said I'm good he was just definitely not coming out of this game and those are verbatim quotes from Melissa on Dan Campbell <laughs> you good man all right great that's it uh, Melissa could barely stop laughing every time he <laughs> I saw that too in the interview right <laughs> <laughs> we're the same way second and seven they're going to stay in the air again this will be a swing to Montgomery it's blown up on a great play by Levante David. So David makes the stop here. They're going to let it run down. It's third down. Let's see what the Lions will do here on third and long. Need to get to the 35, inside the 35 to get a first down. Well, and you're also under consideration for field goal time here, which would be a tough decision to make. In an eight-point game, would you punt it or try a long field goal? You know, an incompletion stops the clock, plus the two-minute warning. Safe ground reverse motion. Eight. Goff protected, throws incomplete. He missed safe ground there, so the clock stops at 2.06. They're out of field goal range. They're going to have to punt the ball away, and the Bucks are going to get it back with a chance. So Tampa Bay's defense despite the penalty comes up big the Lions can't close the game and Baker Mayfield's gonna have a chance to come down the field and tie this one up you know Mike an interesting thing here with that clock at 206 you want all six of those seconds gone so that two-minute warning happens right. now I don't know if you want to dribble it down there or Jack Fox buried him deep. Devin Tompkins is back with the nose down. Trying to turn it over. Fair catch single by Tompkins and made at the two minute warning. So 90 yards. One timeout and trying to stay alive for the season. Here come the Buccaneers. Tampa Bay has responded all day long. They've never led. Can they tie and send this divisional game to the overtime? For the Lions going to San Francisco. Coming up after the game, Chevrolet post game. We'll talk to the stars of the game and wrap up this one here in Detroit. Here we go. 159. Bucks have one timeout. And Mike, you have Aiden Hutchinson now lined up inside on the guard. Baker Mayfield begins from his own 10. Mayfield underneath. Mike Evans, the catch, inbounds at the 15. Jalen Reeves, Maven, the tackle. Sean White, the back. Picking up any pressure that may come. Here comes that pressure. Mayfield in the middle, it's intercepted! It's Derek Barnes! It's off to San Francisco for the Lions! Once again, the slot blitz, the difference in this game. Brian Branch coming flying off the edge, accelerating the pace for Baker Mayfield. He sees him out of the corner of his eye, and it is one heck of a play by Derek Barnes. We talk about Anzalone, we talk about Jack Campbell, the rookie, 
And it is Derek Barnes who makes that circus catch to send his team to the championship game. Four years at Purdue, three years with the Lions, one interception in his career. The Detroit Lions had the second longest drought of getting to the championship game. They were last there in 1991 against Washington. Aiden Hutchinson, the hometown hero, going to help lead him to the title game again. And Jared Goff, whose name has been chanted in this arena the last two games, has really written a memorable chapter in his turnaround. He was sent here as a placeholder, part of the salary cap switch in the trade, Matthew Stafford and all the picks. And he has come in and been a franchise quarterback. He's taken the Detroit Lions to a sense their fans have rarely heard. For the second time, the Lions are one win from making the Super Bowl. And Benjamin Cap, worth coming back. He was here the last time they won the title in 57, and he was here to watch him play for a conference championship in 2024. Mike, you will never be able to say enough about what Dan Campbell has done to the Detroit Lions. You will not be able to say enough. And I think that Sheila Hamp deserves about that same level of praise. They have figured out a way to make it work in Detroit, Michigan. Right there with Goff, the new favorite of the fans. We saw Aiden Hutchinson as well. The guy grew up in Plymouth, Michigan. He sat in those stands and watched the futility of the winless team of Stafford and Calvin Johnson. And now a local guy takes it all in as his neighbors celebrate. What a season for Tampa Bay. Todd Bowles did a heck of a job with this team this year. Getting them to a drive away from overtime to championship game. Love what he is building with a lot of young players. Some key decisions ahead for them. Mike, I want to say one other thing about an offensive lineman. Panay Sewell in this game made a difference. Their right tackle, he's a special guy. It'll be Detroit. In San Francisco, the one and three seed, they didn't play this year. The first time they met was the first game. Dan Campbell was the head coach of the Lions week one in 2021. And it was a long way from there to where the Lions are now. A win away from the Super Bowl. The first NFL interception of Derek Barnes' career is one that they will show over and over in Detroit. Baker Mayfield. Came in after Tom Brady left the Bucks, carried this team. Three touchdowns today, but that pick at the end too much. Jared Goff's superb second half, leading his team, handling the pressure of the blitzes to Todd Bowles' team as he knocks off a guy who he got to know along the way, Dan Campbell. His introductory press conference was three years ago today, and he set out a vision. And a lot of guys have come from different places around the league, like C.J. Gardner-Johnson, but they have come up against vets like Mike Evans and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and found a way to handle their business. And Aiden Hutchinson, the hometown hero, is going to take his neighbors on for a ride that takes them to the championship game. Lions win by a Chevrolet postgame coming up from Detroit in just a moment.